So hello and welcome to a video on gradual typing. So this particular video series uh, I'm, I'm going to kick off is going to be about reviewing uh, uh, papers in the field of gradual typing. And today we're going to start with uh, this paper, Type Lua, an optional type system for Lua. So this uh, particular paper was, uh, was presented earlier this year at uh, the eighth workshop on dynamic languages and applications. And uh, this is a dialer 2014 here, and it was presented in, in June. And um, the general structure of what we're going to look at today, it's going to be a very brief uh, overview. Uh, I'm going to try my best to give a, a decent review uh, without having to uh, dig into the details of the paper, if, if perhaps you're not uh, the kind of person that does that. But uh, it's important to know that these uh, these uh, interesting languages exist. So that, that's the point of this series, is to, to make gradual typing papers perhaps a bit more accessible, or e even giving you some leads as to where you might want to, uh, to study further. So I'm going to be uh, uh, breaking this review down into four different, uh, different sections. First section, I'm going to answer why does this paper exist, in, in my opinion at least, and then we're going to look at the, uh, the contributions that this paper uh, presents. And then I'm going to look at one really cool thing that I, I loved about the paper and then go into some detail about it. And then at the end, I'm going to give some, uh, some overall impressions on the paper. So the first question, why does this paper exist? So uh, from the, the title, you might expect that uh, the, the seed of type Lua is Lua itself. And of, of course, this is correct. And um, this, this paper does a, a, good, a good job of describing Lua. And it's basically it's a, a simple imperative uh, programming language that is uh, built with this uh, unifying data structure of a mutable map. Or in this, uh, in this um, just zoom in a bit, uh, in this context, it's called a table. So a table is uh, an associative data structure. It uh, implements uh, at runtime. It's, it, it, it helps implement uh, associative arrays, uh, records, maps, objects, and it's, uh, it's, it's basically the, uh, the, the bottom of everything in, in Lua. So, um, so it's, it's a very simple language with, the imperative, uh, uh, with an imperative flavor. So the problem is that while we have a simple language, uh, there are not uh, strict rules or strict guidelines as to how to use this. And the first few paragraphs of the, uh, the second uh, page of this paper basically goes over some of the, uh, the issues here that we end up with this fragmented ecosystem of libraries where we have uh, different libraries made by different people and they use different styles of uh, of uh, programming in Lua, you can use object-oriented programming or just uh, basic uh, imperative code, or you can use modules uh, and or, or some uh, some combination. And s some styles perhaps can't even be uh, so precisely described. So there's this problem where we we have uh, this simple language. We have many different ways of programming in this language, uh, and uh, we want a way to understand how programmers use Lua, and we also want a, uh, a tool to help uh, verify that Lua programmers are using these, uh, uh, these programming styles correctly. So the, uh, the second thing we're going to go into is uh, the contributions of this particular paper. And of course, uh, from the title, the, the main contribution is type Lua, and type Lua is a, uh, an optional type system on top of Lua that's designed to, to model and, um, and verify these different kinds of um, idioms that uh, Lua uses. So it's very similar to different optional type systems like, uh, the, the, it's very similar to the goals of different optional type systems like uh, TypeScript and, uh, and Type Racket, for example. Uh, in that, that, but we want to learn more about our language, and we want to give a a, a, a verification tool to use it. 
So one particular thing that uh, it's very important uh, with uh, type Lua and its contribution to the field is that it's a uh, it's designed to be a uh, um, it's designed to be sound by design. That basically means that it's uh, it's designed to uh, to give the programmer some tools to um, if they use type Lua correctly, they can they can enjoy some uh, some some benefits of uh, th that you would have in uh, in a static type system. So, for example, you, you might uh, want to make sure that you never um, write a particular thing to an array, or you, you never want to pass the wrong kind of argument to a to a function. So, um, type Lua doesn't deviate from a standard uh, type theory uh, guarantees and uh, this is a uh, this seems like an obvious point but uh, yeah, it's been fairly popular lately to build optional type systems that uh, that aren't uh, statically sound so a, a great uh, example is typescript where where um, typescript adds an optional type system on top of java uh, javascript and that there are actually a, a lot of uh, similarities between Lua and JavaScript. They're both uh, imperative, and they have a kind of a simple uh, model. And uh, there's a lot of convention going on. But with TypeScript, that they've intentionally poked some holes in the in the soundness of uh, the the type system. And it basically means that uh, you can get uh, some interesting, uh, I guess, you can document your JavaScript code. You can you can prevent certain kinds of errors, but at some point your uh, your static guarantees fall apart. And this isn't a problem in and of itself. Uh, there's this idea of a pluggable type system, which allows you to um, take a, a dynamically typed language or, or any language and add on top statically uh, verified um, uh, layers, which can be unsound or sound. But um, the important thing with type Lua is that it, it's sound, which means that it can be um, it can be converted into a gradually typed language like uh, like uh, type Racket. So you can see, uh, 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 unlike some optional type systems, the statically typed subset of type Lua is sound by design. So a later version of the type Lua compiler can switch. To gradual instead of just optional typing, and that's really the difference between optional and gradual. Optional is saying that we have uh, we have an extra layer of syntactic analysis, uh, which uh, gives us guarantees about a particular statically typed portion, but uh, it doesn't say much about the interaction between gradual and uh, between typed and untyped code. And this is something that type Lua could could add uh, in the future. So uh, let's have a look at the next section, which is uh, when I'm going to name one cool thing that I enjoyed from the paper and go into some detail about it. So the rest of this paper uh, introduces the rest of type Lua. This uh, second section, we're looking at uh, simple types like nil, boolean, number. We have function types. Uh, we get a bit more interesting in, uh, in section three, and I'm, I'm very happy to see that we have uh, some form of general unions here. Uh, it's very similar to the way that type racket or type closure does it, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is a getting. Uh, this is a composite type, so it's getting a bit more, uh, um, bit more complex, a bit more useful. But the real meat of this paper, in my opinion, is uh, this uh, this section here on uh, on tables, or at least this is where it um, it really shines. We have this uh, uh, as we have at runtime in Lua. We have this data structure, a table. Everything is built on top of it. Uh, essentially, all our object-oriented uh, features, um, records, arrays. So uh, naturally, you'd expect that uh, everything in type Lua uh, uh, relies a lot on the table type. So. Uh, the table type is uh, is interesting. It can be uh, homogeneous. It can be heterogeneous, and that basically means it can be uh, you know the uh, 
the type, uh, it's a map from number to, to, to keyword or number to symbol or something like that. It can be that. It can also be something like an object. So you can see in this example here, um, no wait, this is a homogeneous version. Uh, let's have a look. Here's a heterogeneous uh, example where at runtime we had these uh, these maps where we know that we have two en uh, three three entries in this map: the first name, middle name, and last name, and they're all strings. So um, type Lua uses these concepts of interfaces, which are basically uh, sugar over this uh, 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 table type. So this is a, a table with a first name uh, entry that's a string and a last name entry that's a string. So this is all well and good, uh, but the uh, the big gotcha with tables is that they're mutable and there are well-known issues with uh, mutability. Uh, Java arrays being covariant is one infamous example uh, and even, uh, even ML, uh, is, uh, a very advanced statically typed language has had problems with uh, with mutable data structures that actually destroys invariance in the uh, in the type system and a lot of the problems actually uh, stem from this uh, can, be, can be described in, in this sort of form where we uh, where we alias the same mutable data structure and then change it in different uh, different places which invalidates our previous assumptions so we can see this, we have this uh, bogus uh, uh, line here, we have a, a bogus binding or bogus local binding, and it's, uh, it's initialized to this map, uh, which is a, uh, it's, it's a map with a first name entry uh, that is a number. And this is basically what Lua uh, is, is type checking this as, it's saying bogus is a is an entry, is, is a table type with a first name to a number. And then we do something that's, uh, that seems fairly, um, fairly regular. So we, we, uh, we alias bogus uh, to, to person. Then we, uh, we update the, uh, the first name to be a string. So this is uh, actually conflicting with the, uh, with the type that we had before. And, this, if, if type Lua lets this program pass, it'll, it'll be unsound and basically invalidates anything, that, anything interesting we want to say with maps. So um, w we do actually want to, uh, to handle this situation correctly. Uh, for example, that there are some idioms in, in type Lua, in Lua itself, where um, it's perfectly valid to want to build up a map. So we want to be able to add keys to maps. So uh, in this example, we have a, a person table and we want to, to add two entries to it. So instead of having it in the, uh, in the actual table, we accumulate uh, the, uh, the entries in the map. And to handle these, uh, these ways of using tables uh, soundly, uh, type Lua uh, kind of separates uh, this idea of, uh, of a mutable map into two different concepts. So we have this idea of an open mutable map and a closed mutable map, or an open table and a closed table. So an open table, you can, um, you can do every, anything you want unrestricted. You can add keys, remove keys, you can change the type of keys. But once it's closed, you can do uh, only very limited things to uh, to the map, and I, I believe you, you can only you can update the uh, the the type. Sorry, you can update the value of a, a closed map, but you can't actually change the type. So the type uh, for the first name can't go from number to string if it's a closed map. Um, it, it it has to be going from number to number. And um, the the rules as to when a, uh, a map is open or closed are actually quite simple. It's described here. If, if a variable gets its type from a table constructor, then it is open. Otherwise, it is always, con it is always closed. So, for example, let's have a look here. Um, is this person uh, binding getting its value from the table constructor? 
Yes, here's a table constructor. So person is open. So that means we can add uh, add fields and, and change its type. And the, the same uh, the same thing goes for the second line. But here here's our um, uh, scary looking alias. But uh, the the concept of a closed uh, table actually uh, automatically makes this uh, sound to type check uh, because once we use this uh, this style to, to alias, we automatically get a closed uh, map out because it's not a table constructor on the on the right hand side. So you can see if we uh, if we try and write this uh, person dot first name equals Lou, then uh, because uh, because uh, is this right because Right, because this first name here is a number, we can't uh, change it, and because we've changed uh, it to yeah, this is kind of subtle. Maybe I, I'll try an easier example. Uh, let's see. Well, let's go back to our original example. Um, you can see that the uh, the map the type for bogus that we get here is um, is an open map because it's a, it's a table constructor, but uh, the type for person is a closed map because uh, bogus is um, is not a table constructor. So we can't change the type of first name here because it's closed. Anyway, so um, that's just the beginning of what I I think is cool about uh, tables. And uh, the real cool thing is that you basically know everything you need to know about tables uh, to, uh, to get to the end of the paper, except for one or two things. Uh, so you, tables are used to implement modules, and you can, uh, there's these concepts of open and, and closed tables uh, that, that handle the different ways you can change them uh, are enough to, to implement uh, the different ways that, uh, so I think that, there's at least three ways that Lua programmers use uh, use uh, modules or use tables to implement modules, and um, uh, we've already learned everything we need to know to implement that. Um, object oriented programming in Lua is relatively simple. Uh, the the main um, the main way of invoking things is this uh, colon um, syntax where we have the target object, colon, and then a function, and then some arguments. And basically, this calls the function with the, uh, the target uh, object as the, the first argument, or the, the self argument, um, or, or this in Java. Um, and this is basically, it just rewrites uh, this, this method call. And um, there's one other concept that's introduced in this uh, in this section, which is this idea of uh, set meta table, which is a kind of a way to uh, to do subclassing or uh, I think oper operator overriding. Um, I, I I I honestly don't completely understand how set meta table works, but I do know that uh, type Lua uh, understands it, and basically it, it uses a lot of the concepts of uh, of the, the, the table type. But uh, interestingly, this is, <clears throat> as far as I know, this is all you need to, uh, to implement to, um, to get the uh, object-oriented um, style of Lua uh, combined with the, 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 uh, the way that tables work uh, that we've already seen before. So what's my last thing? So I'm going to have. Uh, so what's my uh, overall feeling on the paper? So when I when I picked up this paper, I was uh, I was excited because it's very much related to my work uh, on type closure. I I, um, I wrote type closure to be statically sound, to be an optional type system, and it's basically I was thinking to myself as I was reading this, this is exactly how I would have um, approached these problems, or at least I, I hope I would have. Um, because th these are pretty cool solutions. Um, so if I started, if, if type closure was type Lua, um, I, I agree with uh, with everything that's been implemented here. 
So, um, let's see. Yeah, so that, that's, uh, I, I'm generally pleased with the way that, uh, that Type Lua is, uh, is shaping up. The, it makes me very glad that Type Closure is uh, all about immutable data structures. Um, but uh, it's, it's very cool that there are um, practical solutions to this problem of uh, mutable, uh, uh, mutable, uh, mutable data structures in imperative languages that you can retrofit a, uh, a type system to. So this is a, a cool solution to that problem. And um, so uh, in the future, I'm looking, looking forward to uh, type Lua uh, implementing uh, polymorphism. Um, and there are a, a bunch of different Lua, um, uh, Lua, style, uh, Lua styles, or Lua uh, idioms rather, that uh, aren't yet supported. So we have a, a whole list here, operator overloading, proxies, uh, modifying built-in types, multiple inheritance, delimited continuations. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this paper is very, very clear. Type Lua is a, is a work in progress. So it's, it's an, an initial design. I don't think there's a particularly robust uh, implementation behind this. And uh, Andre, the, uh, the first author, is actually doing his PhD on this um, on type Lua, and you can find that on on GitHub. It's uh, it's hiding in in the uh, in the GitHub for this uh, particular paper. There's actually an implementation of type Lua inside it, and there's a thesis uh, work in progress. So uh, you might want to have a peek at that, and uh, I'm sure the uh, the implementation will uh, will evolve as uh, as Andre. Uh, gets to the end of his uh, dissertation. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. That, that was uh, a first attempt at a, uh, at a paper review. I would love some feedback from uh, people that maybe haven't, uh, haven't actively been reading papers lately. I would love feedback from, um, from people who are experts at reading papers to give me some tips as to how to uh, how to approach these kinds of videos, how I might want to, uh, how to present them or, or, or how to, to review a, a paper effectively. Um, but yeah, I just hope you enjoy it and uh, look forward to more uh, gradual typing papers to come. Thank you.